You, you, you people on the internet gotta let that shit go. That shit is tired. And this is coming from a guy that can sit and watch a John Cena versus Randy Orton match and not complain. <laughs> I feel like an asshole. Ooh. Oh, wow. What a SmackDown that one. I don't know how. On the taped episode of SmackDown, they they managed to pull it off and actually pull on a good show. I don't know how, but they did it. They somehow got us to watch SmackDown for the entire two hours and it didn't drag at all. The matches were on point, the stories were there, and now we're gearing up for the Royal Rumble. Let me give y'all my thoughts regarding SmackDown here today. Not gonna lie, before I start getting on the SmackDown, there's been things going on on the internet as of late. You know, you got your AEW situation, you know, the copyright nonsense. Like, people are just complaining, going on and on and on. It's like, it's like, what did you think would happen? Like, am I the only one that, that, that sees it? Like, I'm, I'm a big AEW fan. I know this is a SmackDown review, but I just want to get this out of there real quick. I'm a big AEW fan. I love I love watching AEW Dynamite every week. Even though in the last few weeks it's kind of been lackluster compared compared to NXT, because like NXT has done things important, like the NXT Championship regarding Finn Balor, Karrion Cross is back, Damian Priest and, and Karrion Cross, Kyle O'Reilly's in the spotlight, Kyle O'Reilly and Pete Dunn had a great banger of a match two weeks ago in NXT, so much shit, you know, like, I just care, and the stuff with the women, Kel Gonzalez and Rhea Ripley, and Candice LeRae and Shotzi Blackheart, Tony Storm and Eo Shore, there's so much going on with NXT as of late, AEW, we got Sting, we got Sting saying the same thing over and over again. But you have Tony Schiavone yelling out, It's Sting! Like, okay, first time when he showed up, nobody knew? Cool. But then the next week, you had Sting, like, basically beg Tony Schiavone to be like, Hey, yo, could you, like, do that it's Sting one more time? It's Sting! Third week on commentary. It's Sting! Even though you announced that he's coming on the show next week. And then the next week, it's Sting! Nigga, we get it! We get it! Enough! Enough! I am tired of it's Sting every week. I'm tired of it. Seriously. I can't take it. <laughs> Other than that, the whole thing with AEW and the copyright thing, what, what did you think would happen? You use footage. I mean, the pictures, all right, that's a bit that's a bit shady. I will not lie. That's a bit shady there, the, the photos. But, like, the footage I understand because everybody knows because WWE is the same way. You use a lot of their footage, they go get on your ass pretty much. Let's get on with SmackDown. SmackDown kicked off with the Universal title match right off the bat, which I appreciate. At first, I'm like, why is this opening the show? Then, you know, I didn't take into, into consideration what's happening on the Fox network, you know, with football and all that stuff, right? So, fair enough. Fair play on WWE for actually putting it their first match of the night. And honestly, it was a banger of a match. You know, you have Roman, KO, we already know the story there. And then they're beating the hell out of each other in the match. Superman punches, stunners, super kicks. Uh, Fisherman busters up the top, you know, using the cage as a weapon, trying to escape the cage, etc. Yeah, Roman Reigns had him in a guillotine, and then Kevin Owens wisely able to choke him on top of, of, with the top rope. You know, you see it to his advantage. This is the second match in a row where I dead ass believed that Kevin Owens was going to win the Universal Championship, even though the match was already spoiled on Tuesday. But still, I dead ass thought, oh shit, he's gonna win the title. So the, as the match went on, Kevin Owens took down Roman Reigns. And then he tried to escape the cage. Then uh, the way how they're like making it seem Kevin Owens is about to escape the cage, pulling the rope and whatnot just to get to the door. Then I realized, yeah, that Jey Uso's coming through. Now, I, every time, every time, I'm like, okay, Jey Uso's down. Where's Jimmy at? 
I keep. I, I might be the only one that's thinking. Okay, Jimmy Uso's coming very soon. They keep teasing it every time. Oh, Jimmy Uso coming next month. Coming two months from now. I keep thinking, nah, that my bullshit. And he might be back on any time now. So you had you had Jay Uso come through. Uh, Kevin Owens takes him out, and then literally by the end of it, Kevin Owens took out takes out both Jay and then Roman using the door to his advantage. As he's about to escape the cage, his hand was on the cage, and Jay Uso somehow got his hand to handcuffs, handcuffed Kevin Owens onto the cage. Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns like, huh? Uh, the fuck's going on? He looks up. He sees Kevin Owens tied up. He sees Kevin Owens locked up to the cage like he's Akon. Locked up. They won't let me out. And then he got up and he's like... Okay. Roman Reigns took his time to get up the fucking cage. When I tell you... It's like when people are at a zoo... And then they're looking at a lion and they're just taunting the lion and shit, you know? Even though the lion wants to rip their fucking heads off. It, it, that's what Roman did to Kevin Owens, pretty much. He's he's walking out and Kevin Owens is talking all this shit, calling him a bitch, all that stuff. He's trying to get his attention. But Roman's like, nah, nah, I'm good, cuz. You see the floor right there? The floor right there looking blessed. This man literally just went like this. Walk down the steps. Every time he takes one or two steps, he looks back. One, two step, look back. One, two step, <laughs> look back. Kevin Owens is talking so much shit. And then Roman Reigns is like, nah, I'm the head of the table. And then he wins the match. Uh, and then he taunts him at the end. Oh, I'm like, yo, just give me one more match at the Royal Rumble. Oh, because Daniel Bryant's in the Royal Rumble match. So you might as well give me one more with Owens. With Jey Uso barred from ringside or some shit, and then Jimmy Uso gets involved. I'm just saying. Uh, then after that, we got, I believe we got the triple threat elimination tag team match with Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. You got Charlotte Flair and Oscar, the champions, and then you got Bailey and Carmella. Holy shit, this match was good. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be enjoying a women's match on SmackDown today, but hey. It was worth it. I know everybody is sour that Flair is back. Um, I'm not those people. I'm happy that she's back for the big matches. I am not Charlotte Dick Ryder. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not one of those people that that accepts everything that they do with Charlotte. That everything they do with Charlotte Flair is 100% right. It is correct. It's the way to go. No, that's not me. Okay. I like Charlotte Flair because she. She delivers big on like matches. She delivers big matches. That's what I'm trying to say, right? It's just that they don't do the same thing with other people. They gotta fix that. They really do. I mean, Asuka felt important just by being with Charlotte Flair. She hasn't done jack since back in the summer. Back at maybe maybe SummerSlam or July to August around that time. Since then, we haven't Asuka hasn't been shit to me, in my opinion. She feuded with Selena Vega. She feuded with Lana. She feuded with Nia J So yeah, I'm just saying, like, Asuka has been lacking over the last few months. And now that Charlotte Flair is back, obviously, those two will, will face each other eventually. Maybe at the Royal Rumble, since there's nobody else for them to face with the tag team titles. And no, I'm not looking at you, Mandy Rose and, D and Dana Brooke. I refuse. So, this match happens. Great match all over the place. Bianca Belair at the end of the match shine like she always does. Can someone tell me... Is there any reason not to give this woman the Royal Rumble? And if you're going to tell me, because you got to give it to Bailey to redo a uh, uh, Bailey and Banks story. No! Please! I need new, fresh feuds. I can't do this anymore. I can't do a uh, uh, Banks and Bailey feud again. Hell in the Cell was it! That's it for now! Come back around after. I don't care if Bianca Belair wins or loses at WrestleMania, to be honest. As long as she's in that spotlight, that's all that matters to me. That she's in a big match situation at WrestleMania for the SmackDown Women's title. That's all I ask for. I don't want to see a Bailey and Banks again. No, no please. You, you, you people on the internet gotta let that shit go. That shit is tired. And this is coming from a guy that can sit and watch a John Cena versus Randy Orton match and not complain. 
feel like an asshole. But it's true. It's true. Match happens. Bianca Belair got the tag after she had to use her freaking hair to bring Sasha Banks in. She was locked in in the figure in the figure four. I thought she was gonna go for the figure eight, but she was still using the figure four. Sasha Banks messed up Charlotte Flair's face with the meteora. I heard reports about that, and then now seeing it, yeah, kind of makes sense. In the end, took out Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks had a nasty fall onto. Um, Emmanuel Hudson looking at him on the outside. <laughs> the dude, you know, the dude that's that's with Carmella. You notice that you know it was a nasty fall after Oscar was standing there for like a good five seconds watching, like, oh shit, is she her? Oh, but I gotta keep a mean face on. Is she her? <laughs> uh, she went out and attacked Bianca Belair, and then after Bianca Belair, uh, I believe she did it, she attacked Oscar to a point where Oscar backed up and then shot off her attack to self in and then ducked the clothes on the temp. Uh, double knees to the face, a cold breaker pretty much, and then Charlotte caught it with the natural selection, and I'm not gonna lie, even though pinfall and submission are pretty much the same in wrestling, to me, a submission, it's like a little, it's like a little dose of burial to me. I don't know, I don't know why. Either way, the match ended, Oscar and Charlotte Flair were still the tag champs as usual, and Bianca Belair again shined. Whenever she comes out, even with no crowd, there's an aura around her that's so attractive, you know? Like, she comes out and you could just see Superstar. When you look at a... Uh... 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 Mm, I was gonna say Nia Jax, no. Shanna Baszler, no. Lot, no. There's nobody else. There's nobody else that feels that way other than Bailey, Banks, Charlotte, and Oscar right now. Nobody. Bianca is the, is the thumb now. Bianca is the thumb or whatever the fuck part of your fucking hand. She's that shit, okay? She's the fifth part of your hand. That's what I'm trying to say. She's the fifth part because Becky's out getting having kids with the, with the Messiah guy. So there you go. There's no fucking way she's not winning that rumble. There's nobody else. There's nobody else, in my honest opinion. Not Baszler this year, no. Not Jax, God forbid. Not Lana, I swear to God. Not... <laughs> Not this one, not that one. It's all Bianca. Yes, I would Naomi is a good choice as well, but Naomi has been in the shithole for the last year and like plus she's hurt. She keeps getting hurt. I don't know how she keeps getting in these positions where she's just getting hurt. When WWE sees someone gets hurt a lot, it kind of shows that you're injury prone and things don't end well for you. But in the end, the match was great. Triple Threat Tag Team match was great. Uh I advise you to watch this entire show, honestly, let's be real. And then we had, I believe we have Sami Zayn backstage with the Street Profits. Street Profits were hyping up about the next match that's coming up with Jey Uso and Daniel Bryan and then the main event, the Intercontinental title on the line with Big E taking on Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn was complaining to somebody saying, were you the one that, that you know, posted online that it'll be a, a, a lumberjack match for the Intercontinental title? Like, what's what's going on? Tell me. I won't get mad. Just tell me, and I'll deal with them personally. I'll deal with them afterwards. And then the person was at the lady was like, nah, I ain't, I ain't no snitch. I ain't 6'9". I ain't telling you anything. True Prophets came through like, yo, fam, hold on. Hold on. We got a gift for you while Sammy was berating them. They, they were like, hold on. We got a gift. Oh, okay, fine. Then. And then Sammy's like, whoa, whoa, you got a gift for me. And then they gave him a shirt. His weird looking shirt you know the i'm your kind of champion i was and then angela Dawkins was so extra with it i was like past tense used to be sayonara i was still the beast. like he was going crazy and then I, like what the funniest part in this segment somehow the one time WWE used the pipe crowd noise right was right here Sami Zayn yelled out, you're not funny. And then you just hear, boom, right after he said it. It was perfect timing and I died laughing after it. Like, I gotta give you credit, WWE, for that, honestly. So after that, then we had Daniel Bryan taking on Jey Uso. Obviously a lot of blood between these two. Uh, Jey Uso keep attacking Daniel Bryan over the last few weeks. I believe Daniel Bryan beat Jey Uso the last time. Story was Daniel Bryan's arm, I believe, was hurt, and then Jey Uso's leg got messed up when he got tossed over the top rope. Daniel Bryan did a suicide dive, which I thought he wouldn't be doing that anymore because that that's what fucked up his neck the first time. I guess he said, "Fuck it, I'm part time now." You know what I'm saying? I got I got kids at home. Shit, if I get hurt, I'm home. I'm cool. I'm chilling. I can just go home. Fuck all this shit. Jey Uso tried to go for a super kick. 
Daniel Bryan ducked it. Whenever Daniel Bryan runs to the corner, you know the running me is coming. <laughs> Whenever he runs to the corner and he bounces off the turnbuckle pads, the running me is coming. He bounces off the corner and then he haul ass running me onto Jey Uso after Jey Uso was hobbling on the one leg and got the job done. But this wasn't a bad match. This was a good match to get by. Great heart hitting. These two were beating the dog shit out of each other. Gotta appreciate that as well. And then we get to the main event. But before that, Daniel Bryan announces, you know, I haven't done any, you know, I've done so much, you know, I've been trying, I'm trying to challenge myself. And there's one thing I haven't done, and that is win the Royal Rumble. Now, I thought he's going to say win the Universal Championship, but I guess that's, that's not important, Bryan. <laughs> and Sami Zayn comes in and braids Daniel Bryan. And Daniel Bryan made the dad joke, pretty much, saying, Oh, I guess he's upset that Santa didn't get him the PS5 or whatever these kids are into nowadays. I mean, Daniel Bryan is Pops. He's Pops now. He's not the young kid from four, five, six years ago chanting yes at WrestleMania with Connor at ringside. You know, all that stuff. No, he's Pops now. He got a, he got his own kid. He, he's chilling. Daniel Bryan went into Rumble, going on to face Roman Reigns. Now, the fans on the internet wants them to tell a story how the fans didn't accept the Roman Reigns, but they accepted Daniel Bryan, and Roman Reigns' moment was ruined by the fans when Daniel Bryan got eliminated at the Royal Rumble years ago. If they tell that story, perfect. If not, we'll figure it out. They're probably going to tell a story over the last couple of months that or Jey Uso and Roman Reigns was attacking Daniel Bryan. That's most likely the story here. And then we get into the main event, Lumberjack match. I was actually, I didn't know it was a Lumberjack match until it actually happened, until they announced it during the show. Like, oh, it's going to be a Lumberjack match. I'm like, in my head at first, I was like, why? It was a good match. Why would you turn into a Lumberjack match? But then I'm like, oh, because Sami Zayn keeps running away. Match happens. You know, Biggie got to get out the powder. Obviously, Sami Zayn is not really happy about it, but the match happens. Obviously, you know, the usual spots in the Lumberjack match. Babyface goes out and then gets beat up by the heels and vice versa with Sami Zayn. He gets thrown out and the Babyface is tackling him after he tried to escape and brought him back in the ring. At some point, Biggie tosses Zayn over the top rope. Zayn was hanging on on the apron. Biggie goes for that patented spear through the ropes, which everybody's afraid of because sometimes you mess it up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Biggie is able to nail it perfectly on Zayn and then. There was some commotion. Drew Gulak threw a punch on Nakamura, I believe, and then, and then there was like a whole brawl, like a normal, like a normal lumberjack match would. There's always a brawl in a lumberjack match. So then the match is goes on, and I noticed the first thing I noticed was Sami Zayn crawling away, and I'm like, this sneaky motherfucker, <laughs> he's crawling away, away from what's going on, and then Apollo Cruz is like, oh shit, I haven't been on TV in, in months. Uh, let me do something. <laughs> he runs after Sammy said, this thing a dope <laughs> after saying they caught him. They they held him like they had him like on the shoulder and they brought him back in the apron and then Biggie able to catch him, hit him with a belly to belly suplex, then hits a splash, set him up, big ending. One, two, three, big E is no! Two time! Two time! Intercontinental Champion! Two time Intercontinental Champion. Great moment. Great moment. Yeah, it was spoiled, but still, just seeing it. Even that, that, That's the thing. People like to spoil shit, or like they spoil it, and I fucking read it for some reason. I was like, because like on Tuesday, I was like, eh, well, I might not even watch SmackDown anyway. Fuck it, right? But I watched it. I enjoyed it, despite that it was spoiled, and I enjoyed what I saw. So, <laughs> it was a good show overall. I really hope that they they continue where they left off this week. This week was a good show. Bring it on the next week. SmackDown, honestly, even though it's the most watched wrestling show all year. I mean, let's be real. Two million viewers versus seven to nine hundred thousand viewers, AEW. And NXT, well, mostly AEW, NXT is like 600,000 to 800,000. Uh, Monday Night Raw, they went from 1.8 to, to 7 to, to 6 to 5. Soon it's going to be 4, 3, and then it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. But 
either way, SmackDown consistently somehow still has 2 million viewers left. SmackDown was a great show. SmackDown review, what did you guys think of the Blue Brand Merry Christmas episode of SmackDown? Was it a cheesy Christmas episode like you normally would get in WWE? I, I honestly hate wrestling in this, like this month, I hate wrestling, to be honest, because everybody's all about Christmas and uh, all the garbage that we've seen in the past. It's just like, oh, I can't go through this anymore. Oh, Santa got run over. Oh, Santa Foley. At the I'm tired. Enough. Please. Like AEW this Wednesday. Lord, that was a weak ass show. Like I stopped watching halfway. <laughs> NXT had me for the entire episode. Holy shit. But the NXT, AEW, what'd they do? Fucking sting. It's Sting! There's my thoughts on SmackDown. What you guys think of the blue brand? What you guys think of SmackDown? SmackDown in the last few weeks has been bearable to good at most. But then again, since Roman Reigns came back, SmackDown's kind of been the A-show since. Let's be real. And I'm not saying because it was the A-show because it was on Fox. No. I'm going based on what I've seen and what I like. And I like I liked Raw before. But then Roman Reigns came through, and now SmackDown is the show I look forward to every week. Raw is like, okay, what bullshit they got this week? And NXT, well, they're on the momentum. Two weeks in a row. Let's see what they got next week. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Thank you all for watching. Leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. These reviews rarely come every time now and then because I'm too lazy to do them every week. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't know how y'all have the energy to review Raw, AEW, NXT and SmackDown all in one week. I can't do it. I, I get exhausted just watching the fucking shows every week, but then again, I gotta review it afterwards? <laughs> nah. Nah, y'all get the universe mode stuff, and that's it. That, and anything else, no. Nah, you'll be lucky you'll get a review out of me. <laughs> so, thank y'all for watching, and I'm out. Later.